offensive line needs Kevin Dotson. Let's be really, really, really clear about that. Good morning to you. Good Monday morning. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports, and this is Daily Shot of Steelers. Comes your way bright and early every weekday morning if you're into hockey and or baseball. I also offer up daily shots of Penguins and Pirates right on the same shelf where you found this. Dotson, the second-year guard who'd been universally expected to start, finally made it back onto the football field yesterday at camp. I was over there, and it was good to see him get out there. As I've been saying all along, the more of these guys the Steelers have who are capable, the more competition they can foster, the better their chance of overcoming the, and I do mean the, big question mark, entering the 2021 season. That said, when Dotson took the field, he did so with the second team. Now, he's been out of drills through the bulk of camp because of what Mike Tomlin made pretty clear was a minor injury. Chuk Sikorafor was in the same position. He also didn't return to full practicing until yesterday. Difference was, Chuk's lined up right away where he's going to line up, and that's at left tackle. Rashad Coward, who's had a very good camp, four-year NFL, I guess you can call somebody a journeyman. He spent most of his time on the practice squad. Some guys do figure it out later on. Some offensive linemen do figure it out later on. But he's had a good camp. He was the left guard again. Kendrick Green at center, Trey Turner at right guard. And then Joe Haig was filling in for Zach Banner at right tackle because they don't want Banner going back-to-backs, and he practiced in full on Saturday. So that looks like the line. That looks like the line. And when I say that looks like, I mean that's what my eyes told me. There's a first team, and there's a second team. But just to make sure we're all clear on that, here's what Mike Tomlin had to say afterward when asked, why Dotson was running with the twos. He has done nothing to earn first team reps. What are we talking about? He's a second year guy that hadn't worked. Brief and to the point, huh? There it is. There it is. Some of you will recall that about a month ago, maybe a little longer ago, I reported exclusively that the coaching staff had been disappointed in Dotson. And the reflexive response, and I mean it was voluminous, was to come at me over the idea that, well, look at him. He looks like he's in great shape. He's in great shape. I didn't say anything about his shape. I didn't say anything about his, you know, his conditioning or whether or not he could lift weights or run. I said that the coaches were disappointed in him. You know why? Because they were. And guess what? They still are. They still are. The logical next question that you'd have is the same one that I'd have. And that's why. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not in the business of making stuff up. I'm not in the business of speculating. I don't know why it is that they've clearly, visibly, plainly soured on him. I really don't. This portion of Daily Shot of Steelers is brought to you by Point Park University. Choose from nearly 100 career-focused programs leading to bachelor's, master's, and doctoral degrees at Point Park University. You can also choose where you learn, how you learn. Go to Point Park's downtown Pittsburgh campus, which is beautiful. Do it online or produce a flexible hybrid format. Learn more about this at pointpark.com. EDU. I'm not here to do a told you so on this. I, I knew 
what my source knew, and I knew who the source was and how very, very reliable this source was and is. I wasn't doubting the information for a split second. But it's different still to see Dotson come out with the second team. It's different to hear the head coach basically put him on blast, which he didn't need to do. There's a zillion different ways Tomlin could have answered an innocuous question about a second-year guard, and he chose to go the way that he did. Oh, and by the way, Tomlin additionally really, really praised Rashad Coward when I brought that up with him. Man, I think he's done an excellent job. Um, you know, he, he has the mannerisms and the, and the demeanor of a veteran, and that's needed, particularly when we're going through the transition that we're going through at that group, when we're missing some guys or work at that group. His level of maturity and experience is showing, and it's an asset to him and to us. Maybe Coward's authentic. You know, maybe he's found something. Maybe there's something that Adrian Clem's done in his work with Coward that paid off. Maybe he's a really good student of the game. Maybe he's following the schematics better. I don't know. I can't stress that part enough. I don't know. But I do know that over the next few weeks, what we're going to see is a very real battle at that position because Coward has impressed management from day one. Coward is going to continue getting opportunities, apparently with the ones. And Dotson's going to have to overcome whatever it is that they want him to overcome. I'll pause it here, stubbornly and maybe unfairly to Coward, that the Steelers would be a lot better off with an effective Dotson on the field, presuming he overcomes whatever it is that they want him to overcome. Because you saw Dotson, I saw Dotson last season, and he was terrific. I said it at the time, I'll say it again. He was terrific within what we know was expected of him. But this is a different team, it's a very different line, and it's a different offense with Matt Canada at the helm and other things being asked. It's going to be fascinating to watch this play out. But one more time, one last time, if Dotson is starting for the Steelers at left guard in Buffalo, they'll be stronger for it, if only because they and he will have figured out whatever it is that's wrong. When we come back, just one question. Just one question that's always brought to you on this program by the personal injury law firm of Luxembourg, Garbin, Kelly, and George, LGKG. They represent people who are hurt in car accidents, who need assistance with workers' comp, who file medical malpractice claims. The attorneys at LGKG pride themselves in doing what they say they're going to do. They've been keeping promises in our region for over 80 years. Learn more at lgkg.com. Today's question comes from Andrew Lewowski, who asks, How many backs do you anticipate the Steelers keeping on the 53? Najee, McFarland, and Balaj seem to be the top three. Does Snell make the roster? Andrew, I have a feeling that the running back situation is going to surprise some people for a couple of reasons. First off, I happen to agree with you that obviously Najee Harris is your number one. And Anthony McFarland has shown well enough that he's got to be considered the two. And within that, McFarland is going to end up being a bigger part of this offense 
than most might realize right now. Not just spelling Naji, but being out there at the same time in multiple back sets. I, I can't even say that with a straight face, but, you know, we've seen it. We've seen it. It's happening. From there, you have Kalen Balaj, who's hurt now. You have Benny Snell, who was hurt yesterday. Not literally hurt yesterday. He was hurt. He was out yesterday because of an injury. And that won't help either of them. It's a short window camp. And the amount of snaps that are available are such that you'd better be there to take them. The Steelers signed a running back out of Monmouth University of all places, Pete Guerrero, who was added to the roster and there at practice yesterday. That's also not a great sign as it relates to other guys being or staying healthy. So some of this might just be decided by health. For another, for another, it could come down to just plain old special teams. Never, ever, ever underestimate the influence of Danny Smith and the special teams when it comes to making the final few choices of the roster. If we're being real here, People who are third string, fourth string, running backs, safeties, wide receivers, they're not making the team based on what they can do with the offense or the defense. They're making it based on kick coverage, punt coverage. So it might be people that would surprise you. If you're asking me now who all would make it... um, I mean, I can give you the big asterisk again as it relates to health, but, you know, Jalen Samuels is still in camp. There's a lot of respect for Jalen Samuels. I know that it's been almost automatic to say, well, he's going to be the guy who's cut, but I don't know that. I don't know that. I don't know that that's going to happen. Because if you do get to the fringes, like I was just describing, you're not going to be keeping people based on whether or not they can be your fourth or fifth running back. They're just special teams guys who have other positional titles affixed to their name in the media guide. You know, they don't have ST in the in the media guide. Everyone's always a wide receiver or a running back or whatever, even if they seldom actually play those positions. I appreciate the question. I appreciate everybody listening to Daily Shot of Steelers. We'll have another one of these tomorrow. 